Hi, Jason here. Now, if you're interested in prompt engineering, then I'd love to give you a little bit of training in this video about how to create prompts and some tips on prompt engineering that will just get you being a much better prompter on the likes of ChatGPT and Google Bard and all of the other uh, language models that are out there at the moment. So let's talk about the state of play with prompt engineering, first of all. It is now becoming quite a thing. There are jobs going right now for prompt engineers online. I'm just, I literally just Googled uh, prompt engineer jobs. And there you are. You can see that there's, there's jobs right here, London, Manchester. And that's only obviously in the UK. There's lots more. But worldwide, I would imagine there's thousands of roles right now for prompt engineers because companies are hungry for people who can do this stuff. People who can use amazing prompts to then generate specific outcomes that the company needs that will save them time, make them more productive. So it's a big deal. And if we just scroll down through the results here, it, there's a good description here of what a prompt engineer does. So let's get that straight. Uh, a prompt engineer is a professional who specializes in developing, refining and optimizing AI generated text prompts to ensure they're accurate, engaging and relevant for various applications. They also collaborate with different teams to improve the prompt generation process and overall AI system performance. So that's why they're very useful and that is the role. How much do prompt engineers make? Well, there's an example here. This was on uh, fortune.com. Uh, prompt engineer postings at the time of writing range from contracted remote work for $200 an hour to full-time positions paying up to $335,000. So it's a pretty good paid job as well. And from your point of view, if you're thinking about, you know, becoming a prompt engineer, it's not really hard work either. So um, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. So in this video, I'm just gonna give you some uh, tips, like a mini course, if you will, on prompt engineering. And let's just uh, start a new chat here and I'll go over everything. So, so let's go over what exactly prompt engineering is then in, in real simple terms. It's the process of crafting a specific input prompt or question to guide an AI language model like ChatGPT uh, in generating more accurate, relevant and useful responses, which is, of course, what we're all after. So I'm going to give you some examples. The three things that you need to think about when you're creating any prompt is that it is not um, basically uh, ambiguous. You know, it's open to interpretation. So the, the main criteria is specificity. So being very specific having context, the more context that you give ChatGPT or Bard or whoever else you're using, the better. And then also, as I say, being unambiguous. So giving very clear instructions that it couldn't think you mean this or you mean this. It's all about being very, very clear like that. And I'm going to give you some examples and we're going to actually use ChatGPT with some bad prompts and some good prompts and then we're going to uh, iterate them and just improve them and we're going to show you how this works when you're engineering your prompts. So here's a classic, I would say, um, an ambiguous prompt. This is what perhaps people who have never used ChatGPT or, or only just sort of use it now and again would put in if they want an article creating. So we'll just do one like this. Let's just type in here. Write an article about electric vehicles. There we go. So now that that is that is a, a really ambiguous kind of non-specific uh, article prompt, and there it is. It has given us an article about about electric vehicles, but maybe it could be an awful lot better if we improved it. And I'm going to give you another example of that. So this one just says um, electric vehicles. Uh, are vehicles that are powered by an electric motor instead of an internal combustion engine. Primary benefit of electric vehicles is that they emit zero emissions while driving. This makes them an excellent choice for individuals and businesses looking to reduce their carbon footprint. So, you know, it's okay. Um, there's nothing really that amazing about it, but we could make it an awful lot better if we just improve the prompt to something like this. 
write a 1000 word informative article about the benefits of electric vehicles, focusing on environmental impact, cost savings and technological advancements. Full stop. Include an introduction, three main sections for each benefit and a conclusion summarizing the key points. Now that should get us a better quality of article. And this is what we mean by, you know, improving that prompt, engineering the prompt to get a better output. And now look at this one. Here we go. Electric vehicles have become increasingly popular in recent years. We've got our environmental impact right there. We've got our cost saving section right there. And we've got our technological advancements there, followed by a conclusion. And it looks like it just didn't quite finish that off. So we would just do the usual, which is just to type continue. And there it goes, it's, it's, it's off and now it's finished. So we've got our conclusion. So there's an example just with an article of how perhaps somebody who's a bit of a novice at this stuff might do it and somebody who will get a better result from the same system, you know, it's the same chat GPT, but just it's how you use it that counts. So there's, there's one tip for you. Then let's talk about a uh, specificity. I always have to spell that out real careful because that's always a bit dodgy. I think we'll chart, we'll start a new chat for this and then we'll, we'll get going and let's just try a, an ambiguous kind of prompt like, tell me about a famous scientist. And here we go. One famous scientist is Albert Einstein, blah, 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 blah. And there it is. Okay. Famous for his um, E equals MC squared formula. But a better one would be something more like this. A more specific prompt would be provide a brief overview of Albert Einstein's life, including his most significant contributions to physics. Full stop. Write it in a easy to understand style for 10 year olds. And there we are. Now, if you're if you're writing perhaps a lesson plan as an educator or something and your your class is, you know, under 10, then this would be a much more use, a useful output here. So um, and here it is. Albert Einstein was a famous scientist who was born in Germany in 1879. As a child, he was curious and loved to ask questions about how things work. So that's a really nice, simple piece. It reads better as well than this one up here. And that's just with that little uh, improvement in the prompt there by asking for the most significant contributions and then also having it write it in an easy to understand style for 10 year olds. Now let's go uh, and, and talk about context. That's the other thing that really helps it out. Now, if, if I was to I could actually do it with this one here. I could carry on with this and just say, uh, can you rewrite this um, for me to explain to a class? So you can say something like this. I am a teacher and I would like to explain Albert Einstein and why he was important to my class of six year olds. Can you please rewrite the above with that in mind. And there we are. I'll just change that for they've made a spelling mistake or my little dictation tool. A lot of people, by the way, ask me how I do this. All I'm using is the built in Mac dictation. So it's really, really easy. A microphone built in dictation. And then you can just speed through and ask questions and prompts. Um, so there it is. It's it's rewritten it again and it's done it in a, a really nice, easy way, probably even easier than the last one as well, because we've said this time six year olds, not just under tens. Uh, and Einstein was not just a scientist. He was also a very kind person who wanted everyone to live in peace. He spoke out against war and nuclear weapons and tried to help people understand that we can all live together without fighting. So this is a really kind of nice, friendly, warm version of that description that would be better suited to a class of six year olds. And, and all of this has just been done by improving our initial prompt. So another one here um, is as well, if we were to say, let's just go with another example. I'm going to click on the new chat here. I'll give you another example for an article again. Write an article about social media. Off it goes. 
That's just a very general article about social media. Really good, but it's not really helping us, you know, with any kind of specific thing. It's just a very general post. Versus... Write a 500-word opinion article in a narrative style discussing the impact of social media on mental health among teenagers. Also add some humour to the article. And there we are. There's a, there's a really, really much improved prompt and then we'll just set it on its way. Starts off straight away speaking to teenagers, you know, as a teenager. And it's it's done it in a first person. I spend a lot of time scrolling through social media. It's a great way to stay connected with friends and family. But lately I've been noticing the toll it's taking on my mental health. And and then it goes on. And, and it's just, it's really, really good. And it talks about the impact of cyberbullying there. And it's it's way more specific and would be much better for the purpose that we've wanted it for. So uh, uh, some let's talk about some common mistakes there. We've obviously given you some demonstrations there of how you can improve your prompt. But what do some of uh, some people who are just starting out with ChatGPT do that's not particularly a, a great in terms of prompting? Well, one thing people do is try and include too many things in the prompt which are totally irrelevant. This is a classic little mistake. People all do something like this. Tell me about the history of the internet and also how to make pizza dough. You know, this this is this is not great, um, but it, it has done a reasonable job of kind of separating the two out. But you're going to get much better responses when you just focus on one thing at a time. And also in the case of ChatGPT, do it in one chat at a time as well, because it really helps when you go back through the chat um, if everything is all on topic. So I'll always start like a new chat if I'm doing anything, anything different at all. Just change the chat. Um, another pitfall, uh, as we've already said, really, is about using um, ambiguous or confusing instructions. It's got to be very, very clear. So let's give you another example of that one here. If we just click on this one here, I'm going to say here's an example for you. And this is this is not particularly a brilliant one here, a brilliant prompt that is. Summarize the book Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza and explain its importance. There we go. So it's going to get off and do that for us right now. I've just been looking at um, that book, so I thought I'd do an example on it. Let me know, by the way, if it's any good. Um, I'm listening to it on Audible, just started. Um, and it has given us some stuff here. The main premises of the book is that the human brain is capable of changing and rewiring itself, allowing individuals to create a new reality for themselves. Well, who doesn't want to do that? So that sounds pretty cool. But an improved prompt for that Let's make it a little bit better with our prompt engineering here. Provide a brief summary of the main ideas in Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza and discuss its significance for entrepreneurs looking to achieve their dreams. There we are. Now let's see what it does. So Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza is a self-help book that focuses on the power of the mind to transform oneself. The main idea is that by becoming more aware of our thoughts and emotions, blah, blah, blah. Now it's got four entrepreneurs. So Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself can be particularly significant as it is as it provides a framework for understanding the role that our thoughts and beliefs play in success. The book emphasizes the importance of taking responsibility for our thoughts and emotions and how this can lead to a positive, uh, positive changes in our life. So this is quite a good, a good breakdown there. So that was with us just, you know, basically improving it just a little bit. So I think that kind of gives you an idea of how you can be more specific, give some context and be uh, unambiguous with your prompts. And that should now help you to, to put a little bit more effort in with your prompts. And if it doesn't come out right first time, then it, it is just trial and error. 
because you're going to get a different result almost every time with ChatGPT. It doesn't have the answers pre-written in its mind. It makes them up word by word. For example, when it started writing Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, it had no idea what it was going to say down here. So it is literally thinking on the fly. So you're going to get different results each time. But with a bit of trial and error, you should be able to get a prompt that you can copy and paste and keep into a notepad or a spreadsheet that you can then use going forward to do the same task again and get some sort of uh, good quality results. So I hope that helped. And by the way, if you're into ChatGPT, you want to learn how to do prompt engineering, then you should just jump into my free group just here. I'll put a link underneath, um, underneath this video. We've got over 4,000 members now that we've picked up over the last couple of months. People are joining every day. Uh, it's just going up and up and up and up. It's crazy. And everyone's talking about AI and chat GPT and prompting and uh, prompt engineering and giving example prompts. And I think you'd really love it if you're into this kind of stuff. And we, we you know, some very generous and good people in this group who share some really intelligent things, some of which sometimes I make videos about um, and call people out in the group too, because they've brought some something fantastic and shared it. And that's what we want. We want to get better with AI and that's our job. So that's it for this video. Please do like and subscribe if you want to learn more about this stuff. And I'll see you in another video just after this one. So hold fire.